life's most precious resource. Drinking water is one of the easiest things to take for granted. Turn the tap and out comes clean and fresh, life-sustaining water. Have you ever thought about where our drinking water comes from? The primary source of water for the city of Binghamton is the Susquehanna River. Most people don't realize just how much planning, design, and work goes into delivering water to their home. Okay, this is uh, the Susquehanna River. This is our intake right here. Uh, the, there's a dam about two-thirds of a mile down called the Rock Bottom Dam. The Rock Bottom Dam holds water back just enough at low water situations that we still have water that will come into our intake. And here's where it comes in and, and as we go this way, we're gonna go through these bar screens. This is all underneath us. Okay, these are the bar screens. These are our, our big bar screens. This will take out or stop any of the big debris that comes through. And then as we come down, the water comes down through here, it's going to go through this unit here, which is a fine screen system. And it's a rolling screen system so that it'll roll and we wash the stuff off and clear it out so that it won't get into the water. And as the water keeps its way through, it goes through these gate valves here into the building. The water treatment plant pumps approximately 10 million gallons of raw water every day. The water will be coming in through here and depending on which one of these pumps is on, it'll be pumped out to this main right here, out the back of the building, up to our chemical building. These are all what we call our raw water pumps, low, low pressure raw water pumps. They're the initial pumps that will pump the raw water up to our plant. This is the computerized system that runs everything and it's monitored up at the plant. Okay, the next step is we're going to go up to the chemical building and that's the first place where the water starts to become processed. Yeah, our main is going to come underneath this dike and it's going to come up to our chemical building and that's where the first chemical treatment of the water is going to begin. Okay, <clears throat> this here is the carbon silo. This is part of the chemical process. This is activated carbon. We feed it for taste and odor. It helps take taste and odor out of the water, you know, caused by algae and other stuff. This right here is the chemical building. That pump that was pumping down the river is feeding right up through this 24 inch line here. This is the first place it comes into our chemical feed. And here, we have our what we call PCH 180 that we feed as a coagulant to help take all the mud, the turbidity, and all the big stuff out of the water. It's feeding right through this pipe right now. This is the injection point where we feed most of the chemicals. We have our turbidimeter, which is just, turbidity is just a measure of uh, the stuff that's in the water. And we have our pH meters, we have a particle counter, which actually will actually count the particles in the water. It's an electrical charge thing to help us with our coagulant, make sure that we're feeding the right amount of chemicals. All these instruments help us figure out what's the proper dose to have so that we can clean the water up. These are all the injection points. Each time you see one of these, there'll be a different chemical that's being injected into our main line here to help with the treatment process. This is a 24 inch line from the river. This is all the chemical feed. You see here's where the coagulant's going in to help mix. And you can see how it goes in here and it wise out. It goes into smaller lines of all. Right now we're standing underneath water. Past that wall there's the, what we call the flash mixers. This here is what we call our flash mixers or rapid mix. The coagulant has been added and it helps through this basin now, it will mix it and start settling out all of our solids and particles of stuff that we don't want in the water. And then it's going to follow this trough down into our sedimentation beds out that way. Okay, these four sed basins has two compartments each. 
and it's about 18 to 20 foot deep. The water will come through here, come down in here. Now it goes to what we call our slow mixers. And that the slow mixers, there's a long shaft that goes down there with the mixer end on it. These pumps or these uh, motors control those propellers and you can see how it's gentle movement it's going around it's mixing those chemicals up and it'll probably take about a half hour for the water to make its way through here as it works its way down the flock begins to form in here it's kind of hard to see right now this is making it the flock is gets the particles make them big so they get heavy so they start sinking out and as you come down through here After we get through the slow mix area, you come into the sedimentation area. Now from here to the igloo, we call that the igloo, it, it'll take about two hours for the water to make its way down here. Most of the heavy stuff will settle out, the big stuff, the water starts to get a little bit clearer until it goes into that igloo, it'll go over into what we call our weirs, their troughs, and they'll take it into the filter building. The water has worked its way all the way down these sed basins. And now the clean stuff is going over into these troughs, out these troughs, out this door, down through there, over to our filtration building for the next process. As the cleaner water makes it over into the weirs, they'll come into this channel. This channel goes down to the end here. There's a big pipe down there. We'll go into that pipe and it'll go out into our filtration building and start feeding our filter beds. The water's it gets that darker color like that because we feed the activated carbon. The carbon kind of makes the water black, but the carbon is what takes out the taste and odor. And we usually feed a lot of carbon during the summertime because the algae dies in the river and it gives the water a bad taste unless you could take that, that smell out, that musty, earthy smell. Okay, now after the water comes out of the sed basins into the pipe, it's going to flow into this building via these underground pipes into this, which is called the filtration building. These are what we call the filter beds. When the water comes in from the sedimentation bed, the influent valve, we open that up, we let the water in here. Now, each one of these beds filters the water down through the sand, and then there's gravel into the under drain and into the clear well that's below us. Now the operators control all these things from this console right here. They can wash the filter bed. They, they open and close the valves. Now, if you look down through the filtration building, you're gonna see there's 10 filter beds. They have two bays apiece. All the piping, we call it the pipe galley. The pipe galley is all the underworkings of all these beds and how they control the flow, take care of all the water coming in. This is the pipe that's bringing that water. You can see it says settled water into our plant, the filter plant now, to be treated from the sed basins. That line there, this line here are wastewater lines, which is any of the waste when we backwash the filters, anything going out. See right now we're standing underneath the filter, the filters. We're, we're underground, we're, this is all water here and here on either side of us. And underneath us is the clear well. There's another 12 to 14 foot underneath us, this whole thing is a big clear well. It's like a big swimming pool underneath there. And this is where the water's held before we send it out to the mains. As it's, as it's sitting in here, it picks up the chemicals that we added, chlorine, fluoride, and the phosphate, and it works its way down to the high lift pumps to get pumped out into the system. Right, these are what we call the high lift pumps. These pressurize the system. They pump all the water out to the mains. We have a 24 inch main that goes out this way, or a 30 inch main that goes out this way, and a 24 inch main that goes out that way. This is the main feed system that comes out of our plant, goes on, into the street. As it feeds the mains, it also feeds up to the reservoirs, and then it becomes a dual system where it's gravity fed and pressurized by these pumps here. In addition to supplying water directly to the city's main water pipes, the water treatment plant pumps water to eight separate storage tanks located throughout the city. The skater room is where all the computers are that control the plant. We have two operators here. 
they usually run the whole plant through these computers, plus our camera system for securities here. Uh, most of the whole plant can, can be controlled from this area. Okay, this monitor here is where they control the plant from. They could go anywhere in the plant on this screen. They could look at any area. They get the whole overview. They could go down to the said basins. Not only that, they could go to all our remote sites. They could go to all our remote tanks, see how filled they are, what the pressures are, what pumps are running, and they can control everything from here. All our chemical feed systems, they can control from here. All the alarms will come in here. This tells everything that's happening. Water temperature, water pH, the chlorine dioxide percent that's being fed, the rapid mixers, the what's flow, how many gallon, million gallons a day we're pumping out. They monitor this all day long, eight hours a day, 365 days a year, weekends, holidays, there's always somebody here. It's never vacant, this place is always running. We never stop. This is what we call the sat lab, or satellite lab. As operators are doing all that stuff, they have all these chemical tests to do. They test the pH, they test the alkalinity, they test the hardness, they test for fluoride, they test for chlorine. And we have our sample tamps that, that we run to grab all the samples from to do all the testing. The difference between this line and this line is this is untreated, this is semi-treated, and this is fully treated. So we have it all right here so we get a good group right next to each other we could take all our samples from test and see how we're doing in the process. The main lab is where they're going to do all of our back tees, all those tests that our operators do get repeated in here. It all gets recorded in these books. You have all the different instrumentation here to do that. You have some of the same instruments that are out there in the SAT lab. Plus you have other ones like they do the alkalinity, the hardness. We test for giardium and cryptosporidium, but along with that they do an analysis of the actual river water. They do a count of uh, uh, actual organisms, total coliforms, and actual um, E. coli organisms. Well, we have to take at least 50 samples a month, minimum. minimum. It's a minimum, okay? We have to make that uh, number uh, based on population. Okay? So every day the lab tech will go out and right. all these, bring them back to this lab and test them for all that. The first thing in the morning, every day, I go and get samples for about two hours. This is a business that we go to, um, and they're, you know, helping out the community by letting us come in. Okay, this is our area that we get a sample from. We get out our disinfectant spray, spray the opening so that there's no bacteria on that, so it doesn't contaminate our sample. And now we have to let our water run for three to five minutes so that we get what's in the system, not what's sitting in their pipes. And then after that, I come back to the lab and I run different types of tests for the rest of the afternoon. From pHs to turbidities to alkalinity to chlorines, the orthophos that I took, um, iron, there's uh, hardness that we take, there's fluoride because we um, add that to our water. There's all sorts of tests that we run here. All these um, tests that we're doing are results of the chemicals that we add to the water to make it safe to drink. Well, the plant was built in 56 and the, some of the piping was here before that because the old plant used to be across the river. It's got to be over 100 years old in some places. You know, miles, miles of piping. Last year they replaced 8,000 feet of it. We replace hydrants, lines get replaced, manholes, catch basins, storm sewers, any main breaks, new services to houses. Well, right now, uh, these guys right here will go out every day on calls that are already scheduled to do. Now, if an emergency comes up like this here, they'll, instead of going to that maintenance call, they'll come out to the emergency situation, work on that. Two lines coming off that water main, and we have to find both of them without hitting them. And if we can find it, and hopefully maybe it's this side, which will make it easier for us because then it's just an old service. 
we just abandoned it because there used to be a house there at one time and I don't think that it was ever disconnected back in the days when they redid all this. It's got copper in there, it was put in in 1957. So sometimes what happens is that copper gets old on the end and it gets like a little crimp in there and, and it just cracks right there. So we just uh, we'll shut it off at the main valve on the water main and we'll just piece another piece of copper in and fix it from there. A lot of time and hand digging we gotta find it without I don't want to have to shut the water main down. I don't know if I'm going to put these guys out of the water, which is salt service. And that's where the guys come in with the hand shovel and we just work together as a team and go from there. So the next time you reach for a refreshing glass of water, fill your tub, take a shower, or even water your lawn, Consider all the planning, maintenance, and work involved to bring safe, affordable drinking water to your home every day, 365 days a year.